On this episode, I'll be making some colored lightweight concrete in these new plastic forms and then stacking them to make a deeper and taller raised garden bed. For the lightweight blends, I'll be replacing the gravel in a Portland cement-based concrete with first perlite and then vermiculite. In the perlite blend, I'll add a red concrete color, and in the vermiculite, I'll try the black and see how that looks. Mixing concrete creates a bit of dust, so I'll mix my ingredients outside and then bring the wet mix into the shop to fill the molds. This way, I can maintain the ideal temperature of 70 degrees, so the concrete hardens at a predictable rate. Later, when we get to stacking these panels, I'll talk about some ways of making that easier. With the panels from the plastic forms, there's a draft angle on the edges that affects how they mate to each other. It's just something that we have to think about when stacking them. Also, I'll be prepping my molds in a new way that's different and I think better than I was in the first plastic forms video. Lightweight concrete is not as strong as sand and gravel based concrete, so I like to add some wire reinforcement to my panels. I add a wire wrap around the pipes and a wire grid down the middle. This is just some extra insurance and it doesn't take long or cost that much more to wrap the wire and cut the grid. The wire and grid are available at most building supply stores. I'll have a blog post you can refer to for all the parts and specifications of what I use here, plus the recipe for the lightweight blends. There's a link to that post in the description or go to manabouttools.com slash deepbeds. All right, let's get started. I always work on a bench that's level in both directions, so the forms fill evenly. And I can check that with the spirit level across the table and then lengthwise. The floor of my shop is slightly sloped, so I add a few wood shims under the legs of my bench. I use 12 gauge galvanized fencing wire to reinforce the concrete where it's the thinnest, and that's around the hole formed by the pipes on either end of the panel. To make these wire wraps, I use wire cutters, pliers, and a short length of plumbing pipe that's 7 inches long by 7 8 inches in diameter. I first cut a piece of the fence wire approximately 24 inches long. Use caution when cutting this wire as the ends will be sharp and the roll end can spring back and possibly cause injury. I wrap this wire around the pipe four times, keeping it between the two black reference marks I added, and they are spaced three and a half inches apart. When I wrap it, I go slightly beyond four rounds, and then back it off to open up the spring, if you will, and line up the two ends. Then with pliers, I loop back these cut ends. And this is how it will sit in the mold before adding the wet concrete mix. For my first lightweight concrete blend, I'll oil my molds as I did in my previous video. I use a thin coat of food grade mineral oil and I apply it with a sponge. I also apply this oil to the pipes before inserting them. For the grid, I cut this from 4 gauge hog panel fencing. This galvanized livestock fencing has a grid that's 4 inches by 4 inches. And to cut this, I use small bolt cutters. Here's the ingredients and some tools for the first lightweight blend. I use Portland cement, perlite, masonry sand, and some glass fiber. The manufacturer of the glass fiber recommends adding one pound of fiber per cubic yard of concrete to provide crack resistance. So that amounts to only a quarter ounce per 36 inch garden panel, which is just a pinch. Now this may seem like way too little fiber to make a difference, but that fiber really spreads around through the mix, so much so that you can see it easily in the finished concrete everywhere. Feel free to add more if you like and do some tests to see if it makes any difference. I'll also add one ounce of cement color per 36 inch panel. For the perlite, I'll be using the red color. 
I'll mix that with my water to help it blend evenly into the ingredients. Here's the recipe using volume for measurement. Two parts perlite, one part sand, one part cement, and a pinch of fiber. If you didn't get that, then don't worry, I'll have a blog post on my website. See the link in the description. Here's the recipe by weight, and it will fill two 36-inch molds or three 24-inch molds. And you can scale the recipe up or down to suit your needs. I have included the weight of the water as it's easy to measure this way. The amount of water can vary greatly depending on the dryness of the ingredients you start with. The sand I buy is often wet, so that can change things a bit. But this is a good starting point. I'm using an old metal paint can for measuring my ingredients here. It's 7 inches tall and 7 inches in diameter. I'll start with 4 heaping cans of perlite, followed by 2 cans of sand. The grade of the perlite is coarse. I then mix those two ingredients in my wheelbarrow. Then wet it down with some water. This also helps to reduce the dust from the perlite. Now I add one can of the Portland cement. Give it a stir, then add the glass fiber. Then the second can of Portland cement. Now I'll blend this well. I'll add the rest of my colored water and add some fresh water to rinse the rest of the color from the white pail. Then I'll slowly add more and more water until my mix is wet and has a shine to it and it starts to resemble a mortar mix. I try not to have it too wet or sloppy. This may take some practice to get it just right. Sometimes I've added too much water and then had to quickly add more dry ingredients to get back to a thicker consistency. In the shop now, I'll start filling the molds. It may seem too dry a mix at first, but a little shake makes it flow and fill into the corners. With a small trowel, I pack a bit more of the mix around the wires and pipes. To settle the mix further, I use a reciprocating saw without a blade and push it against the table. Or a rubber mallet works well too. With the mold half full, I can rotate down the wires and set the grid in place. I'll add more mix to the mold and spread it with a trowel. Then vibrate it again. Then I'll repeat all that for the second 36 inch mold. And finally trowel the surface somewhat smooth. I made up another batch of the perlite mix and filled some 24 inch molds. When done, I cover all the fresh lightweight concrete with plastic. and set the thermostat of my shop to 70 degrees. After six hours, the concrete has solidified and I can then remove the pipes that form the holes in the castings. I use a small nail to pull and rotate the pipe. The pipes are easiest to remove when the concrete is still a bit wet, but solid. And the time it takes to solidify is dependent on many factors, those being the amount of water in the mix and the ambient temperature. For this mix and the temperature of my shop, it works well to pull the pipes after six hours. This will take longer in a cooler environment. Also, waiting longer will make removal more difficult. Sometimes you may have to gently tap the pipe with a rubber mallet to free it enough to pull it out. 
With that done, I will cover the concrete again with plastic. While covered, you will see condensation forming under the plastic as the concrete is beginning to cure. This is a good sign and shows me that the plastic is holding in moisture. I left the molds covered like this for three days. Now the best part, unmolding. I grab the ends of the mold under the flange and lift and pull it past the end of the table. Then push against the edge of the bench while rotating. I don't want to stand a fully loaded mold on its flange edge. Once flipped over, I gently lift the edge of the mold while pressing down with my other hand toward the center. And I alternate end to end with this until the mold becomes free. I'm happy when I see the clean inner surfaces of the mold. Now on to the second 36 inch form. Also, you can gently flex the edge downward around the mold to free the plastic sides from the concrete before lifting and rotating it over. Any excess mineral oil can be wiped away with a cloth. The shorter 24 inch molds have less overall flex, so they can take a bit longer to free from the casting. I'll leave these fresh castings wrapped in plastic in my warm shop to cure for a few weeks. I'll periodically wet them down with water so they don't dry while curing. This will give me the strongest panels. For the next lightweight mix, I'll prep my molds in a new way. I'll be using a finishing wax in the cavity of the mold and petroleum jelly on the pipes. With a cloth, I apply the finishing paste wax to all the inner surfaces. It dries in only 15 minutes or so. Then with a clean cloth, I'll buff away the wax haze until all the inner surfaces are shiny. For the pipes, I'll brush on the petroleum jelly. This will give me a good even coat that's thicker than if I just wiped it on with a cloth. I'll slide the pipe in and threading the wire wrap as I go. My goal with this new prep method is to give me a better surface finish on the concrete and to make the pipes easier to remove if I've left them in the forms longer than the ideal time. The second lightweight mix is very similar to the first. It uses Portland cement, vermiculite instead of gravel, masonry sand, and glass fiber. And for this blend, I'll use the black or charcoal cement color. As before, I'll add the measured color to some water. The ratios of the dry ingredients are the same as the perlite mix. And this is a medium grade vermiculite. And here's the weight of all the ingredients if you're using a scale. As I mentioned earlier, the water weight is for reference. You may need to use more or less than this amount to get a wet but not sloppy or pourable mix. And have extra dry ingredients on hand in case you add too much and need to make the mix drier. So to my wheelbarrow, I added my four heaping load cans of vermiculite. Now I'll add two cans of sand. followed by most of the black color that was mixed in some water. I'll blend that well, then add the glass fiber. I'll add the first can of cement, mix the ingredients with a shovel, then add the second can. Then I'll slowly add water, a bit at a time, until I get a wet, mortar-like mix. Then into the shop to fill the molds. Both lightweight concrete blends are nice to work with when filling the molds, and they're easy to trowel and are pretty responsive to vibration to help settle them.
then mix another batch of the vermiculite blend, then fill three 24-inch molds. I decided when editing this video to show the forms being filled a few times. And sometimes when I ramp up the speed, it's easier to see how well the concrete settles and to see how everything kind of ties in and goes together. And for visual learners, I hope that this helps. This time, I purposely waited longer before pulling out the pipes to see how well the petroleum jelly worked. All the pipes came out without issue. There might be a buildup of petroleum jelly left over on the molds when the pipes are pulled. This is easily wiped up after. And all the pipes in the 24-inch vermiculite blend casting also came out without any problems. So I'd say using petroleum jelly on these pipes works better than mineral oil. I gave the concrete a spray with water before covering them back up with plastic. Two days later, I unmolded the vermiculite castings. With the mineral oil prepped molds, I've been getting some trapped air on the surface of the forms, so I'm hoping that the wax treatment will eliminate that issue. The 36 inch ones looked really good. I was happy with the color and surface finish. After some gentle persuasion, the 24 inch panels came out as well. I think they look great and they got a really nice finish. After a few weeks, I brought all the castings outside to dress any sharp bits. I used a concrete rub tool to smooth these edges. If the tool gets clogged with concrete, it can be cleaned with a wire brush. After weighing, I found that these panels were on average 22.3 pounds for the 24 inch. The same panel in regular sand and gravel Portland cement weighs 33 pounds, and the 36 inch weighs on average 33.2 pounds instead of 50 for regular concrete. So the perlite panels on average were 33% lighter than regular sand and gravel concrete, and the vermiculite panels were 32% lighter. So pretty significant savings in weight. In my previous line trimmer test with these blends, the results were very good and they're very durable. The line trimmer didn't damage the perlite or vermiculite panels. So let's get on to stacking these panels to make a deeper bed. And to do that, I'll need some longer rebar than before. I picked up some pre-cut epoxy coated rebar in 24 inch lengths. And to help with stacking, I'll be using some plastic wedges. These are available for leveling furniture or fixing wobbly toilet bowls. They happen to be just the right angle to compensate for the draft angle of the mold walls. So this is the rectangular bed I assembled in the first video. I brought in six of the 36 inch lightweight panels and placed them close to where I'll need them. I'll pull two of the shorter rebar, then place two of the plastic wedges on the top of the end panel. Then placing my first lightweight panel on top and roughly positioning it so the holes line up with the ones below. I'll set more wedges on the next panel and pull another short rebar. I can set this next panel then work the longer rebar into place. The rebar should not require much force to slide it in. I'll slide another length of rebar in to temporarily hold that first panel in place. I'll work my way around the bed, placing wedges, pulling short rebar, and replacing it with long ones. Now, it's not a requirement to have the second row of panels in a lightweight concrete. I just happened to be making lightweight panels for this video, so this is what I had. You could have your second row of panels made from regular sand and gravel concrete if you like. Also, I decided to alternate the color of the second row from red to black, just to see the contrast between the colors.
Now for the last panel. I'll pull the rebar, then gently slide the panel into place. So, I'm not too excited about the red color of the perlite panels. I think they came out too light. I like the black of the vermiculite though, and I think they look pretty sharp. And these lightweight panels can stand on their own. They are durable enough for the starting row of a raised bed, as shown in this 2x3 bed that I put together. To finish, I'll tap the rebar into the ground with a rubber mallet. And there you have it, a stacked concrete garden bed. And I'd say it looks really good. I like how smooth the concrete is when I use wax instead of mineral oil in the forms. And also how well the pipes come out with petroleum jelly brushed on. The shorter 24 inch mold always takes a bit more effort to remove the casting as it has less flex. It sometimes requires a bit more gentle persuasion and patience. I've used lightweight concrete made from perlite and vermiculite in the past, and those panels are holding up very well. I showed them in my 5-year concrete garden box video. The sand in the mix gives it the durability I like and the reinforcement some added strength, and the lighter panels are much easier to place when building the garden box. With taller beds, there will be more force from the soil pushing on the panels. In rectangular beds with panels lined up end to end, it might be an idea to tie the sides together with a galvanized wire that wraps around the rebar and is buried in the soil. This wire would be added between the stacked layers when the rebar is installed. Just remember that there's wire buried across the bed if you want to dig or turn the soil later. Also, longer rebar hammered into the ground will prevent the sides from bowing out. Also, Keep in mind that deeper beds may require topping up the soil level year to year. That added weight of a deeper bed can compress the soil more than a shallow bed. In my next video, I'll be making thin panels in a new mold with a brand new high strength concrete blend. I'm really excited to show that to you and it'll be coming right up. So thanks for watching and leave me a comment with your thoughts or suggestions. We'll see you next time.